so in the uh, last class uh, we saw uh, how an uh, latch functions and how to implement uh, various latches uh, now in this class we are going to see uh, what and how to uh, an, uh, implement an uh, flip flop using gates okay uh, now uh, let's first uh, again uh, define the uh, what a latch is and what a flip flap is and try to understand the difference okay uh, latch responds to the uh, change in the level of uh, clock pulse uh, that means as long as the clock is high uh, whatever is happening like uh, clock is high we saw in the uh, enable whenever the enable is high whatever is happening uh, uh, in the input that gets reflected at the uh, output okay uh, whereas uh, for in a uh, flip flop uh, only during the uh, edge when the clock is going from uh, 0 to uh, 1 okay or it could be it could be uh, this is known as positive edge triggered flip flop or when the clock is going from uh, high to low the only in during that uh, 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 state okay during this small uh, duration of time uh, the input will be sampled and the output will change okay or uh, not during the en entire uh, duration when the clock is high right for a latch when the entire du uh, duration when the clock is high uh, the output will be uh, and, uh, the input will be uh, reflected at the output so if when the clock is high if the input is changing accordingly the output will also change uh, here when the clock is high uh, and, uh, even if the input is changing the output won't change okay so it will be sampled only during the uh, edges okay so whatever is the value uh, of the input when the clock is uh, making an uh, transition from low to high or high to low only during that time the output would be uh, no, slaved to the input okay so that is the uh, basic difference between an uh, latch and an uh, flip-flop uh, so uh, if you see here uh, why we require an uh, no, flip-flop here okay what is wrong with latch now uh, suppose uh, I have a circuit uh, something like this uh, where uh, Q is uh, xn that is uh, value and the uh, previous value of x okay uh, you are doing an uh, previous uh, uh, x bar okay uh, so the, this is the previous value now if you see here uh, suppose uh, this is uh, 0 out here so uh, this is uh, 0 out here right and so this will be 1 here so this is uh, 1 available here now when the input is changing from 0 to 1 here uh, what happens this is going to become uh, 1 out here right so then this will become uh, 0 here so that 0 will come here this will become 0 here now again and now this 0 uh, will uh, make this q as uh, 1 here again that 1 will come here right so uh, if you see here in this latch this is known as a race around uh, race around means uh, the uh, input is available here and you are taking a uh, previous input and giving into the combinational circuit uh, so uh, you will find and a closed loop has been formed and uh, continuously uh, if you have just changed the input from 0 to 1 the output will keep changing from 0 to 1 1 to 0 because and 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 because of this uh, uh, feedback network okay so uh, that is the problem in latches so hence uh, that problem is known as a race around uh, where the output gets coupled to the input and the output becomes an, uh, unstable so continuously it will toggle between 0 to 1 1 to 0 so this is known as a race around in uh, latches okay so uh, to stop uh, the, that kind of an uh, 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 race around problem and uh, to eliminate the race around problem we have something known as uh, flip flops uh, and a uh, flip flop can be uh, amazed in uh, two ways uh, one is uh, by uh, configuring two latches uh, or by using an, a gate so we'll see these two techniques uh, we are going to learn uh, today okay uh, so the first uh, technique in which you have uh, two latch out here okay this is known as an uh, master latch and this is known as the uh, slave latch okay so this is the uh, this is a d latch uh, d master latch and uh, d uh, slave latch okay now what happens is now if you see uh, the clock given here okay uh, this is the enable pin which we uh, saw last time this uh, enable is used as a clock here now you are giving a clock out here here and you are uh, giving an uh, you have put an inverter here and you are giving an uh, clock bar signal out here okay uh, so now if you see when the clock is uh, zero out here when the clock is uh, going from zero to one here so this 
latch will be uh, enabled so once uh, this is enabled now the data available here okay will be available at the output okay so this is uh, a q and q bar okay that becomes a set and set bar for the next stage okay so when the clock is going uh, from 0 to 1 so this data uh, d becomes transparent and during the entire when the clock is high this will become uh, this output of d will be available as an uh, snr or q and q bar is available here now when the uh, clock is going uh, low okay uh, during this negative edge when the, the immediately the moment it gets low out here right this latch will be uh, enabled now uh, initially this latch was uh, disabled because we are giving an uh, inverted clock here so when the clock is high uh, this will be zero here so whatever uh, d was available here uh, that stops here okay that stops here so uh, this this is going to uh, retain the previous value whatever it is okay now when the clock is going from high to low here okay uh, during that particular uh, transition okay whatever was the input out here okay this latch is enabled and that will get reflected at the output okay uh, now uh, after the clock is uh, no, uh, gone low okay after the clock has gone uh, low here uh, even if d changes uh, uh, no, the change will not be reflected here because when the clock has gone low uh, this has been disabled now if you see here clock is given here right so so if you see here now uh, d will be whatever is the data available here okay uh, while the clock is going low here okay at that particular instance uh, d will be available here and uh, that will get uh, slaved to the output and uh, uh, once if the clock is continuously high or uh, uh, clock is continuously low in that case the output won't change so the output will get reflected uh, only during the uh, negative transition of the uh, uh, clock out here okay so uh, let me uh, repeat it uh, once again uh, when the clock is initially uh, zero out here right if the clock is zero out here so uh, this is disabled okay so uh, whatever happens to d uh, is not seen here this is disabled this is enabled okay so uh, if it is enabled whatever was the previous state here okay that continues to remain here when the clock is going from uh, zero to high uh, this will be disabled right because you are giving an, a clock barrier so this is disabled so it will continue to remain in the same state here uh, whereas now a uh, d gets sampled and it is available at here right so uh, d is available at the output okay now when the clock is going low at that particular uh, instant whatever is the value of the d okay uh, that will be available here and 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 this clock is going low means this is going this is going to get enabled so it since it gets enabled this d uh, starts getting a reflected outside okay and when the clock is continuously low also and uh, during that time uh, this is uh, this is uh, completely disabled right so uh, so the data is not available here uh, similarly when the clock is continuously high uh, this is transparent but this is off so uh, even in that case also uh, the uh, output will not get reflected here so the only uh, time uh, when this output is available uh, uh, outside is during the uh, negative edge of the clock right when the clock is continuously high uh, data is available here but this is off when the uh, clock is continuously low the, whatever data was available here is available output but uh, the change in d will not be reflected because master is off now so only during this clock when is going from high to low so this will be known as a negative edge triggered and a flip flop so whenever the uh, clock is going from high to low uh, the sampled data whatever is d uh, will be uh, available at the uh, output okay so if you see here uh, since it's an uh, uh, negative edge triggered flip-flop so a bubble is put here and and this triangle uh, indicates uh, the uh, clock uh, the here uh, that it is an uh, clock that that means it's an uh, flip-flop here so this is the uh, symbol okay uh, is this uh, operation uh, clear to all of you uh, Kishan is it uh, uh, clear how a master slave flip-flop works yeah uh, Mariam uh, anybody is it uh, clear this has to be uh, very very uh, clear how this uh, no, operates right only the d data d will be sampled during the negative edge of the uh, clock so if i have to make an uh, po master slave positive edge uh, if you see the uh, waveform out here so if you see here uh, this is a d right so d is changing uh, so initially the clock is going high here so uh, uh, clock is going uh, low here right so d is zero so uh, uh, q the output q remains an uh, zero out here 
now uh, the, the master uh, it is shown the master is also zero the slave is also zero and now when the clock is uh, uh, here now the, the clock is going high here right so the when the clock is uh, going high here the master is enabled so the since the master is uh, enabled so uh, the output here will go high here right but this is not enabled now this is disabled here the slave is disabled here because the clock has gone high so uh, the whatever is d is available here it is not available at the output now when the this is the uh, clock which is going low here now this is the time during this edge this clock is uh, this uh, no, flip flop is enabled this uh, latch is enabled so you will have uh, this uh, no, uh, Q going high here because this is enabled here. So this output is going to be uh, available at Q. So now the Q, uh, Q slave, Q S, this is Q slave. Okay, Q uh, S is going here. Now if you see here, uh, this D is changed here, uh, but uh, it is finally getting reflected at the output during the uh, negative edge of the uh, clock out here, right? If I take a, a one more cycle here, now the D is uh, changing out here. Okay, uh, but again here the clock is low. Uh, so if the clock is low, the master is not going to change here. When the clock is going high here, and the clock is uh, going high here, since D is low, uh, the uh, the master is uh, 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 is capturing that data. Now even when the clock is high, uh, the data is going high. So that may, uh, so so this is going to be transparent during the clock is high. So the data is going uh, high here, right? And then the clock uh, and and here the clock is again uh, falling here in this case okay the clock is uh, falling here so this this is getting switched off but this at, at this edge this clock is getting uh, this uh, slave is getting activated so if you see uh, uh, what is happening in this edge what was the available qm was high so output is get going to get high so if you see here again here uh, in during the falling edge whatever is the data uh, that is getting uh, reflected at the uh, output okay so you can uh, analyze this waveform uh, further also so uh, wherever the clock is here again the clock is getting low here so uh, it is high out here here it is again the clock is going low here so the output is a uh, zero so the output so if you see the uh, response of the slave uh, and the clock and the data wherever the clock is going low uh, whatever is the data uh, at that particular instance the slave is going to get changed so the state of the slave uh, will always uh, slave the final output will always change only during the falling edge of the clock and during the falling edge of of the clock whatever is the data uh, what happens in a, before that is of not uh, concern only during the falling edge of the clock whatever is the value of the d uh, that gets an, uh, latched okay so that is known as an uh, flip flop okay so uh, this is the um, operation of a master slave uh, flip flop right so uh, if you have to have an, a positive uh, and a triggered flip uh, edge triggered flip flop then uh, you need to uh, uh, swap the uh, clock here like initially uh, i gave an uh, clock uh, here and clock bar here now if i put an inverter here if i, if I go to uh, this schematic if you see here clock is given here and clock bar is given here so this is getting activated when the clock is going uh, low and uh, now i am giving a clock here and and clock bar here so this will get activated only when the clock signal is going high so in uh, so this is known as an a uh, positive edge triggered uh, flip-flop uh, here the D will be sampled whenever the clock signal is uh, going high so the function is very very uh, similar only thing is the uh, clock given is uh, here inverted for the master you are giving clock bar and for the slave you are giving uh, clock so whenever the post during the positive edge of the clock the data will be sampled and it will be uh, fed to the uh, output okay uh, so a uh, symbol wise you you don't have a, a bubble here so you just have a triangle so this triangle uh, indicates it is an edge triggered and uh, the, the absence of a bubble here uh, indicates it is a uh, positive edge triggered uh, flip-flop so this is known as a uh, master slave or positive edge triggered uh, flip-flop okay uh, now these uh, flip-flops can also be uh, implemented uh, directly uh, using uh, gates okay instead of a master slave flip-flop I, I can use an, uh, uh, gates also like this okay so if you see here an, uh, uh, four NAND gates and six NAND gates have been uh, used here so uh, if you see here uh, this is an SR latch okay uh, S bar and R bar so uh, we know for an S bar and uh, R bar 
uh, if it is 1 1 it will uh, retain the previous uh, state whatever it is right and uh, to set it we have to put this 0 and uh, to reset it we have to put this as 0 so this is a, a, a cross coupled NAND SR latch and these are the uh, additional gates you know, which make it an uh, edge triggered flip flop now whenever the uh, clock is 0 if you see when the clock is uh, 0 here so this will be 1 this will be 1 here because these are uh, two NAND gates and one of the inputs is uh, 0 here so uh, if you see here uh, 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 whenever the clock is 0 uh, you will find uh, this is uh, uh, 1 and this is 1 out here so previous state is uh, 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 retained as it is okay so that is uh, case 1 now uh, there could be a second uh, case also uh, let's uh, say uh, when the clock is uh, 1 okay uh, if the uh, uh, clock is 1 uh, and and the output is also uh, uh, 1 okay for uh, the previous state is uh, 1 or already uh, 1 so uh, what happens is if you see here uh, now uh, here uh, uh, if the uh, uh, if d is uh, 0 out here uh, and, and uh, previously uh, the uh, output is 0 let's take an output is 0 so reset is uh, uh, 0 out here and uh, set bar is 1 so you have uh, r is equal to 0 so you have an, uh, a 0 coming here right so you have an uh, uh, 0 coming here so this will be 1 so whatever uh, even when the clock is uh, uh, 1 out here uh, whatever change in d uh, will not be uh, reflected so uh, in this case even though the clock is 1 here right when it is continuously 1 here okay since since the reset is 0 here okay reset is reset bar is 0 here so you have a uh, 0 here so any change in data uh, here here uh, will not change the output b so it will continue to remain uh, in that state uh, same is the case uh, if you uh, take a uh, case where uh, reset is 1 and, and set is equal to 0 uh, the change in data will uh, change p uh, but then set and reset and uh, won't change okay because the clock is uh, one out here so uh, this continues to remain in the uh, previous state so only uh, way this data will change is, is in this uh, case particular case uh, where uh, yeah, d is uh, suppose initially it is 0 and d is 1 and now the clock is changing from 0 to 1 okay in that if, if you analyze uh, these signals you will find that uh, when the clock is going from 0 to 1 here then uh, if it is not 1 then uh, this will be uh, set to uh, 1 here right so this is again an a positive edge triggered okay so the output won't change uh, even when the clock is 1 if d is changing it won't change only during the uh, clock is changing from uh, 0 to 1 mm, that is the time uh, any uh, whatever is the data available accordingly the output would change so this is also uh, a way of uh, implementing uh, d flip flops okay so uh, i think if you understand the uh, no, uh, graph it will be uh, good enough so th these are a, a set of NAND gates which are there if you understand these uh, transitions you know, what is written here so it will be uh, very clear so if you see here uh, if the clock is you know, continuously 0 or continuously 1 then uh, a, whatever is the it, it will maintain the previous stage so the only way the output can uh, uh, switch from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 is during the positive edge of the clock during the positive edge of the clock if the data is 1 and this will get slave to 1 and if it is 0 it will get uh, slave to 0 so this is one way of uh, implementing it uh, directly using the uh, NAND gates okay uh, so uh, also for these kind of flip-flops also uh, you could have an uh, set uh, and and uh, reset uh, signals also uh, that means uh, normally uh, depending on the clock and the data the output will be a uh, uh, slave to one or zero depending on the data uh, whereas parallelly uh, no, asynchronous this are known as asynchronous so uh, irrespective of what is the clock if i give a uh, preset is equal to zero uh, this output will go to one so uh, a set is also known as a uh, preset okay so if i give a zero signal here it is preset bar here so this will uh, go to uh, one okay uh, irrespective of what is the uh, data and the clock uh, similarly if i have to reset it uh, I will give a zero signal here because this is a reset bar here uh, or a reset is also known as a uh, clear also so if I give a zero here uh, irrespective of the clock and data this will get to zero so these are the two additional uh, pins which are generally available in any flip-flops uh, uh, so that 
uh, we can uh, set these you know, flip flops to the uh, initial condition or uh, during uh, the count in for some conditions we wanted to bring it to 0 or 1 so then we can use this uh, asynchronous preset and uh, reset uh, pins also right so this is so uh, this is the uh, diagram uh, which is most important for us to uh, understand now uh, if you see here uh, this is the clock when the clock is going high now uh, d is one here so q is going uh, one here right and and then again the clock is going uh, one here uh, d is one here so the output is one here right and and then uh, again this is the clock going high so d is low here in this case and hence the output is going low right and and uh, here if you see here the set bar signal has gone zero so uh, set bar signal whenever it is uh, going zero uh, during that period uh, irrespective of data and clock the output will be zero so it is gone uh, zero here now the set bar signal has come back to one out here right uh, but it will continue to remain in whatever uh, state it is like like it is set set bar has gone uh, zero uh, so that is why the q has gone high out here so now this set bar signal has gone uh, but then it will continue to remain in that state until the next clock comes now here the next clock comes uh, here the data is one so it is continuing a uh, one here now the next clock again data is one it is one here and uh, next clock here data is zero it is going to uh, zero here right and now uh, if you see here so that is how uh, this moves again uh, reset is going zero here so whenever reset uh, goes zero here the output is going to uh, zero here so this set and reset um, they are asynchronous so whenever the set is going to uh, zero the output will be uh, slave to one because it is set bar it is uh, slave to one here and it will continue to remain one uh, even after that uh, till the next clock comes okay uh, because uh, d gets reflected at the output only during the uh, positive edge of the clock so for this if it's an, um, a positive flip flop so uh, that is a uh, few simple things to remember is uh, whatever is the value of the d will be available at, at the output whenever the clock is going high okay uh, uh, whereas uh, for the set and uh, reset signal it has nothing to do with the clock or even with the data whenever the set bar signal is low output will be uh, high okay and so that is the uh, two things which we need to uh, remember so this is known as an uh, edge triggered uh, d flip flop so this is the uh, graph most important thing which you should know uh, for our uh, design purpose uh, in the next class right so uh, we have uh, something known as a uh, d flip-flop uh, we learned till now there is something known as jk uh, flip-flop right so uh, jk flip-flop is uh, like this is known as the characteristics uh, table instead of one single uh, d input you have uh, two inputs j and k okay so uh, if it is uh, uh, j is, uh, and k both are zero zero then uh, even when the clock is going high okay uh, uh, during the positive edge of the clock also uh, the previous state whatever was there uh, it will uh, remain as it is okay there will be uh, no change uh, but if uh, j is zero and k is equal to one uh, irrespective of what was the previous state and uh, now you are giving j zero k one so the output will go to zero that means q will go to zero and q bar will come to one okay uh, similarly if if j is one and k is equal to zero and then uh, again uh, okay this this input you can give any time but the output will change only during the positive edge of the clock okay so whenever the clock is going high so j and k will be uh, changed uh, before the arrival of the clock so uh, if, if it when the clock is arriving if j is one and k is zero the output will be uh, set to one right okay and now if i say uh, uh, if j and k both are one if the clock is coming then the output will uh, toggle if it were a zero it will become one if it was a one it will become zero so i write it as a q bar this is q t t plus one that is the uh, next stage on uh, receiving the clock this is the previous one so it will make it this is known as a uh, toggle okay one one means it will uh, toggle the output okay so uh, so if i write the uh, characteristics uh, equation uh, q uh, t plus one is j uh, q bar plus k bar q now if you see uh, uh, if j is equal to 0 k is equal to 0 then what happens uh, j is equal to 0 uh, this goes off k equal to 0 means k equal to 1 so q 
So Q T plus one is equal to Q. That means you know, what was the previous state that will remain. So J is equal to zero, K is equal to zero. This will become Q. So the same state remains. Uh, similarly, if J is equal to zero, K equal to one. J is equal to zero means you know, uh, uh, this will go off, and uh, uh, K equal to uh, uh, one, right? So this will become uh, zero. So this will become uh, uh, no. Uh, so J is equal to uh, zero. So this will go. Uh, so this will become a uh, one. So this will become an. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, I am making some mistake. Uh, suppose it is an uh, uh, Q is an uh, uh, zero, right? Uh, J is equal to zero. J is equal to zero means uh, this is going to get vanished, and and uh, K is equal to uh, one, uh, right? Uh, K is equal to one means K bar will also be zero. So both will be zero. So it will be uh, set to zero. So irrespective of the previous state, it will become a uh, zero. Uh, similarly, if j is equal to one, so uh, this is going to become a one. So this is going to be a q bar uh, or and uh, k is equal to zero means k bar is one. Q, uh, q bar or q that means it is going to remain one. So uh, the output will be a uh, one here. So this is just the characteristic uh, equation. And and one one means uh, if you see one one here, uh, uh, this is going to be zero. This is going to be j is one to so q bar. So uh, basically you just have to uh, remember this is the characteristic equation. You have to remember this a zero zero means output won't change a uh, zero one means it will be reset to zero a one zero the output will be set to one and one one uh, it will uh, toggle okay so this is known as a uh, jk flip flop so in your uh, lab also uh, we are going to do uh, some experiments uh, using this uh, jk flip flop Though these flip flops are um, available in 74 series ic's okay uh, so a uh, positive edge triggered and uh, so let's see uh, how this works yeah uh, if you see here this is the uh, positive going uh, edge of the clock uh, you find an uh, uh, j and k uh, it is j is 0 and k is 1 here so the output is uh, 0 here again uh, j and k is making a change out here so uh, that is not really uh, reflected at the output okay uh, only during the positive edge of the clock it will uh, see what is the value of j and k so during this positive edge of the clock again uh, j and k are 0 so it continues to uh, remain in 0 here and now the again the, the third positive edge is here uh, in this case i have uh, j as 1 uh, k as 0 so the output has gone to uh, 1 here right uh, and then j and k are changing so but that is not going to get reflected here now uh, here if you see again the clock is going high in the here in the last state uh, whereas uh, j and k both are one so one one means it is going to uh, toggle right so this one is going to uh, toggle to uh, zero here so this is the uh, waveform uh, which clearly uh, shows how an uh, jk flip-flop you know, uh, works out here right okay uh, so uh, these are the four different which we already now uh, how to implement an uh, 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 JK flip-flop see this is an uh, D flip-flop right so you make an, uh, these connections like this then it will become an, uh, an uh, JK flip-flop so let's uh, try and understand uh, see uh, if I put J equal to 0 and K equal to 0 uh, what happens J is equal to 0 uh, this uh, and gate uh, doesn't function right so this is a d flip flop so this and gate is not going to work uh, this and gate is going to work because k is equal to 0 you are giving 1 here this and gate is going to work so this is a 0 here permanently 0 here and uh, what is this if you see here it is a q is coming here so q will come through here through here and it is available here so uh, that means when j is equal to 0 uh, k is equal to 0 uh, i am giving a uh, uh, q uh, from here from here as d so when the clock is going high there will be no change same q is being fed into a d here so it will continue to uh, retain that value right now uh, suppose j is equal to 0 here right so if j is equal to 0 so and 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 k is equal to 1 so this will become 0 here so this and gate is also giving 0 this is also giving a uh, 0 here so i am giving a 0 into the d input so when i give 0 1 here when the clock is uh, going high uh, this will toggle and the output will become uh, 0 here uh, similarly if i am uh, giving an uh, 1 0 here so uh, i have uh, 1 coming from here right and, uh, and and if you see here uh, q bar here okay if you if it were a, a, a 0 
then uh, I will get an uh, 1 here and uh, similarly uh, here also uh, no, I, I, I am giving a 0 here so I am a 1 available here so you will find uh, in uh, 1 will be available in if it is Q in the previous stage if it is a 0 or a 1 and doesn't matter from uh, one of the channels here you will get a 1 here so it will uh, toggle to 1 so if you give 1 here 0 here uh, whatever is the previous state now it will uh, slave to uh, 1 and now if you have an, a 1 1 here so this uh, AND gate will be uh, enabled and this will be disabled and if you see here uh, what is being given here a uh, Q bar here so since uh, now you are you know Q bar is being fed as input D so with every uh, clock uh, in if it Q bar is being fed so the next you know, so it will toggle the state uh, suppose it was 0 here now Q bar will be 1 here so now uh, 1 1 is being fed into the D input so with the clock it will become 1 here now if it becomes 1 here this will become 0 here so in the next clock again you know, it will uh, toggle back so this is how a uh, jk flip flop uh, can be realized uh, using a d flip flop by giving uh, uh, these connections okay uh, so so this is implementation of an uh, jk flip flop uh, using now uh, another important uh, type of last kind of flip flop which we are going to study is known as uh, t flip flop okay which is known as uh, toggle flip flop okay so you have uh, one uh, t input and when the uh, uh, clock is there now the uh, function is if t is equal to 0 then it will maintain whatever state it is and if t is 1 then it will uh, toggle a toggle means if it is 0 it will become 1 if it is 1 it will become a 0 here so this is known as an, a toggle flip flop so this will uh, talk the output will toggle only when the toggle input is 1 if it is toggle input is 0 then it will uh, retain the uh, previous uh, state so all these uh, uh, functions uh, you need to uh, remember uh, how and jk d and t flip flop works only then we will be able to uh, design uh, sequential circuits okay so uh, so uh, internal uh, functioning even if you don't uh, remember at least uh, externally uh, how this fun uh, this this characteristics uh, table uh, looks like and uh, that you should be very very uh, clear right okay uh, now if you see here uh, toggle flip-flop this is the positive going uh, edge of the uh, clock now Q is 0 here now during the uh, positive edge of the clock okay now uh, this uh, 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 Q was 0 here so since T is 1 it has changed from uh, 0 to 1 here okay it has uh, toggled out here uh, again during the positive edge of the clock uh, t is uh, uh, 1 out here so it has again toggled from 1 to 0 okay toggle means it will change from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 so during the positive edge uh, as long as uh, t is 1 uh, it will make a toggle from 0 to 1 here it, it's toggling from 0 to 1 here and here it is uh, toggling from uh, 1 to 0 uh, whereas uh, in the uh, in in the third uh, state if you see here uh, the clock is uh, making a change out here we're going positive edge of the clock whereas a uh, toggle signal now uh, is 0 here so it is not making a toggle from uh, 0 to 1 here it is continue to remain in uh, 0 so uh, essentially for a uh, T flip flop whenever there is an uh, clock signal going here and the T signal is high only then the output is going to toggle that is from 0 to 1 or from a uh, 1 to 0 so that is a change it is going to uh, happen okay uh, now the T flip flop uh, can be uh, implemented uh, from the D flip flop like this okay uh, so uh, if you see here in the d flip flop uh, whenever a toggle signal is uh, zero out here this can be implemented in a, a directly uh, like this also or, or through a d flip flop like this here right so in a d flip flop if you see here uh, uh, t is given here like and 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 q is given out here so if t is zero uh, so this becomes like xor we learnt uh, earlier also if, if it is a zero here whatever is available here will be available here right so it will whenever t is zero the same output is fed to the uh, d input so this it will uh, continue to remain in the uh, same state okay uh, whereas uh, if t is one so uh, what does an xor do uh, if whenever t is one here it it is going to uh, uh, put an uh, it's uh, going to work like an inverter right that we saw 
uh, how an uh, XOR can be used as a controlled inverter. So whenever T is 1, uh, Q will become a uh, Q bar out here. So it will keep uh, toggling. So this is how a T uh, uh, flip-flop can be implemented using an uh, D, uh, D flip-flop. Even for an uh, JK flip-flop, uh, I can uh, implement it, uh, a T flip-flop using JK flip-flop uh, by shorting the G and K and giving uh, T. So in case uh, T is 0, then for JK, if I give 0, 0 for a JK, it will remain the same state. And for a JK flip-flop, 1, 1 means it will toggle. So if I uh, short G and K and, and I put uh, T here, uh, this is also going to uh, work like an uh, T flip-flop. Okay, so this uh, again directly through the uh, gates also uh, you can uh, do that. You know, so if you see here, uh, when the clock is 0, uh, you have a zero zero here it will uh, retain the previous uh, state and also if uh, t is also zero because it's an and gate it will be zero zero uh, it will uh, retain the uh, previous uh, state uh, but if t is one and when the clock is also one you will have these two uh, becoming a uh, one and if you will see here uh, uh, q is uh, fed here and q bar is uh, fed here uh, so we know uh, 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 no, this is uh, the reset uh, now uh, yeah, uh, the, the set is here and a uh, reset here. So if Q is high here, it will be uh, reset to zero here. So this will work like an uh, T flip flop here. So uh, gate wise, this is how we implement. Uh, this is a T flip flop uh, uh, implemented with D flip flop. This is a T flip flop implemented with uh, JK flip flop. Okay, so uh, uh, today we have uh, learned not only learned about uh, latches but also uh, flip flops. These are the basic uh, building blocks. So uh, I suggest uh, before coming to the next class, uh, at least just be clear about the uh, operation of these three uh, flip flops. Uh, you don't have to uh, get into the uh, no, uh, gate level implementation or all these things. Okay, uh, uh, these uh, sorry, uh, these kind of circuits that you need not uh, know. But uh, at least you should be uh, clearly know uh, how these flip flops work uh, with respect to the clock and the input and how the output changes uh, with respect to the inputs and the clock. So at least this much you should uh, be uh, thorough before we take on the uh, next class where we will see how to uh, design sequential circuits. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, for today that's all.